coming in tonight, this this would be a a challenge for us as it is anytime you play in the Carrier Dome. And, um, one of our keys to the game was just playing fast and trying to keep it simple, being tough and being fundamentally sound. And um, you know, just really proud of our players for the way they competed for 60 minutes. Um, you know, even when we got down a couple times, we we talked about keeping our composure and, and just sticking to our system. And um, hopefully, things will turn for us, and they did in the last 11 minutes of the game. So. Hat really goes off to our players. We're, we're super proud of them. We're happy for them. And um, it was a great win for us. Questions? Peter yeah. talked about uh, you playing against Syracuse. I mean, the second year in a row, you really played out of your brain against the Orange. Um, Syracuse is always a fun game to, to play in. Uh, it's just it's kind of just a test. It's you versus the other guy shooting. And, Syracuse, you know those guys are some of the top shooters in the country, and you get ready mentally, and it's kind of it's kind of a different mindset going in there. So, were you, were you seeing the ball real well tonight? Um, I was seeing it pretty well um, in the second half. In the first half, I was struggling a little bit, especially the second quarter. But uh, second half, I got it going and started seeing the ball a little bit. Comparatively, was that last shot one of the easier ones you think you saw? Um, the last shot was a, a lot of adrenaline, just trying to do everything I had to stop the ball, but. Um, it, was, it was a good shot, so. Uh, so anytime you uh, guys had a lot of success, the Hobart fans over here, they started a let's go Hobart channel, they sped up with the name of the school. Like, did that kind of feel you guys and maybe feel like a home game a little bit? Uh, I don't think it made it feel like a home game, but I know when we uh, play Syracuse, we always get a lot of fans. Uh, it's a big game for our school. It's a big game for, well, maybe not for Syracuse, but for us at least. Um, we wanted to show them that we can play with them. Um, I think the chance just go along with us playing well and uh, people just being excited about how well the game's going. Um, I, think they, I think our fans got into it. And yeah, I mean, it definitely helped to hear them on the sidelines. Um, it, it got me going, yeah. Alex, you scored six goals, uh, you know, really shooting the ball well. The last one, I mean, it's a clean face-off win. Jenkins is running over to pick it up, and, and I mean, it looked like he got in the system. He could have pushed it right to you. Is that what you saw, um, or is it different? He went in and he, uh, he like stabbed at it, and he, he didn't pick it up, and someone got a check on his backhand, and he pushed it to me, and uh, my defender was on my back right, and he went for the ball over here, so I, I scooped it this way. Um, he just didn't pick it up clean, I guess. I, 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 I couldn't tell you what actually happened. It's kind of just in the moment, but... Um, yeah. But the next minute, you're going right to left, right to your strength, your left hand. And, uh, well, right before, right before that, I did the same exact thing and took a horrible shot and was upset. And it was in my head. And I was like, God, oh, I probably should pull this out. And then the kid, the kid backed in a little bit. And I was like, oh, might be time. So I, I let it go. And um, we talked about the halftime. Um, we felt like we were trailing their cutters a lot, and, and credit to their players, um, Maltz and um, Kometi and some of those guys are, in all honesty, some of the better guys off the ball we've seen all year. They're, they're really talented cutters, and we knew going into the game that was going to be um, – knew that was going to be a challenge for us defensively. So we talked about just trying to stay between the ball and, and our guy a little bit more. We wanted to – we felt like we needed to be a little bit stronger with our own ball defense. We felt like we were getting a little soft there towards the end of the second quarter. And you just – you can't give those guys offensively cushion. They're, they're too talented and they're, they're too skilled and, and they shoot the ball too well. So um, – but I think it really goes down to – I've always felt like when you play in here – if you're going to win the game, you've got to have 15 plus saves. And um, when we won in here in 06, we had 16 saves with Mike DeSantis and and, and Pete had 18 tonight. And, um, if you look at the stats, um, a lot of the stats favor favor Syracuse. Um, so again, I think obviously the credit goes to our players. Pete was great in the goal. We cleared the ball fairly well, and and I think our offensive efficiency was was pretty high tonight.
So it's a combination of those things. You know, it's a, a goal that gets 18 saves. I mean, you know, coached a long time. Some 18 saves were like, yeah, okay, 14 of them were from 14 yards because right. my defense was playing so good. Right. When you watch your goalie making hockey saves, kick saves on the crease and stuff like that, do you start to get the feeling on, on the sideline that, hey, we're going to have a chance here? I mean, he's going to keep us in this game. I get excited. He's got big feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I, I think from Pete and I haven't talked to him about this, but um, someone said it earlier. He, he had a good game against Syracuse at Boswell Field last year. I think that helps your confidence as a goalie coming into the game when, when you've played against someone before and, and had a pretty solid game, although the result didn't turn out the way we wanted it to last year. Um, and I think, you know, as a goalie, you kind of get the zone. And, you know, there are times where, as crazy as it sounds, more shots can can almost be a good thing for a goalie because you just you get in the rhythm. And, and when you get hot, um, it's a little bit easier to stay in the zone when you're not going through these extended period of times where you're just standing out on the other end and, and um, you know, not seeing any shots. So I'm not saying we want to do that all the time, but I think that may have helped Pete tonight. And Alex, you get, a, you get a good view of that. What do you, you're watching that at the other end. You must be saying, we're going to have a chance. Really? Um, I don't really think about it, to be honest. Really? No, no. I think if you think about it, it's just, it's, I, I try to stay in my zone. I think Pete tries to stay in his zone for the most part. Um, so you weren't watching and enjoying the game? I, no, I, I watch, I watch, but it's not like enjoyment. It's just, let's do it, you know what I mean? It's, there's no enjoyment, I don't think. Charles, the ex, you're matching up against Cal. He seemed really just dominant. What was he doing that was just so about for so long? Yeah, first off, hats off to him. Dominated. Griffin and I pretty pretty good. But uh I mean we didn't have any film on him. We we were scouting number twenty six and four, so he kinda threw us a curveball there, but hats off, he did a great job of us. But we just tried to battle all time up and let our wings get in there. That's really all I can say about that. <laughs> Coach with their domination at the face off. The, as the clock starts winding down lower and lower, is that one thing that you know kind of gives you more pause and more worry as as, as he holds the lead? Uh, sure. <laughs> you know, when, you know, they they had momentum at you know in that area of the field, and um, you know, obviously when you score or you get scored on, if you score, you want to keep the momentum. If you get scored on, you want to try to stop the bleeding. Um, so that you know. We have talented players there. We didn't have a great game there tonight. That happens sometimes. Um, you know, we'll, re we'll refocus and get prepared for Saturday. You guys, you know, I don't hate to rain on your parade here, a great win and everything, but you guys are in the thick of an ECAC race. And you've got two huge games coming up. How do you guard against, you know how emotional it is when you play Syracuse? You've got to turn it around now and really, I hate to say, more important. Uh, yeah, we, um, you know, first and foremost, our league's the most important thing to us, and, and we're fortunate that we play in a great league. Um, you know, teams that have been to the Final Four, Loyola was a national championship last year, and I really think the ECAC from top to bottom is one of the strongest leagues in the country. You look at Bellarmine was 20th and when we went out there this weekend with the number one goalie in the country, and, um, you know, every game in that league is a dogfight. And I think playing in that league, and um, you know, we, I was telling my staff today, by the time we get through this weekend, we will have played five teams in a row in the top 20 in the country. Um, we've played Denver, we've played Ohio State, we played Cornell early. So, um, you know, as good as Syracuse is, and they're, they're excellent, I, I think at the same time we're a little battle-tested. Um, and, and we've been... We've been in really competitive games against excellent programs, and I think that helps you late in the year. But, um, you know, this one on Saturday, we're, we're right in the thick of a, of a conference race, and, you know, this is an awesome win for our players and our program and our alums and our school. Um, and I told the team in the locker room, we're going to enjoy this for about an hour heading down I-90 to exit 42. And when we leave the locker room tonight, this one's over. And... Um, our focus is right on the wall.
Peter, you started the first quarter with six saves, and then you kind of fell off a little bit in the second. What were you able to do to kind of get back in the zone in the <laughs> second half? Um, I went into the locker room and kind of just sat there, and, and I realized... <laughs> So that's kind of what I said. I said, just have fun. And I went out there. I felt loose. Uh, Coach Stanley gave me a nice little warm-up, and uh, I started getting going. So. Charles, this is your uh, first taste of full heart series. Just welcome to it. Uh, what are your thoughts? It was pretty surreal, honestly. Uh, just playing in the dome against Syracuse. It was just a lot of fun running out there out of the tunnel, being with these guys, getting, getting away, and it was a lot of fun. Alex, uh, I lost count of where you're sitting now, but you broke your own record for D1 goals in the third home mark. Can you talk about doing that and doing that tonight? Um, actually, I actually haven't thought about it tonight. Okay. But um, that's incredible. Yeah, the last year I was amazed that I did that. Um, but we, we still got two more games left. And that's kind of where my head's at right now. What was going through your mind when you had that trip at the end and finally got the win? Yeah, we, uh, on the bus, we were all just like, man, we, just, we need to bring this back to the house. We want to celebrate it. Um, we, 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 we talk about the trophy all the time in the locker room. Um, it's, just, it's, it's an amazing feeling to finally hold it up. Uh, I know I've been waiting three years now to hold it up. I know the seniors on the team have been waiting, waiting for it. We haven't won it since 06. Um, so it's been a lifetime coming. Where do you guys put it now? Where we put it at? Yeah. Uh, now they're right on coach's task. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, that's a good question. <laughs> we'll find a spot. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, Coach, I don't know if you guys outscored them 4 to end the game, but you also held Syracuse scoreless the last 11 plus minutes. Did you make some sort of adjustment on defense? Not really. We just, you know, when we had timeouts, we talked about just trying to tighten up the game plan a little bit and, again, trying to apply good on ball pressure. Um, we saw some things on the Princeton tape that we liked defensively in terms of where we wanted to be off the ball and, and trying to be a little bit lower and not getting stretched because um, I think that if you're not careful they can stretch it defensively and that's not a good thing with the, with the guys they have out there running around so um, that we were we were you know we weren't sliding to Reed Rosello and, and Sean Regan we kind of put them on an island tonight and uh, we made one switch we put Eric Lombardo in on, on Maltz, and we had made that adjustment last year at halftime, and um, we had a good second half defensively. I think they only scored three goals on us in the second half in last year's game. So in the fourth quarter, I, just, I, I felt like we, we needed to make that change, and I felt comfortable doing it with Eric because he had had success doing it last year. And um, I think he did a pretty good job. He's a good communicator in there. And, they probably settled, settled our middies down a little bit off the ball.